Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Today, day 23, although I'm starting to lose the days, you know, with this Christmas coming up, especially when you've been off work a few days, you start to, uh, days start to mould into one, and you're like, what day is it today? Look at your clock for it, look at your, uh, you know, your phone. So, day 23 of the wine advent calendar from Iceland, uh, it's been a cracker, been a cracker. Um, Today's wine review is Founders Stone, the Homestead Pinot Grigio. Um, from Wine of Moldova, 12.5%. Um, it does say some writing on it, but the writing's so small. So, put the flashlight on. Crisp and refreshing with citrus and green apple mixed, or oh, is that muted with subtle notes? Superb flavour and length. We shall see. So, let's have a look. So, yeah, this company, and I think it's Lanchester Wines, is the actual company. Uh, they're obviously sourcing all their Pinot Grigio from Moldova simply because Moldova is a hell of a lot cheaper than it is from Italy and to be fair as long as it tastes the same does it really matter? No, not at all. It's only our perceptions of um, where a drink comes from you know, champagne, maybe champagne because of that region of France, doesn't mean it's the best sparkly wine. Prosecco is an absolute amazing uh, sparkly wine, but that's only from Italy as well. Um, that area of Italy, it's like Spain, Carva is a Spanish uh, drink, whereas most other places just call it sparkling wine, if you didn't know. So. So, not much on the nose, a slight bit of citrus on the nose, but not too much. I am in the kitchen at the moment, there's uh, uh, dinner cooking, so. Definite citrus, and definite apple as well. Um, I do like bottles that actually tell you what you're going to be tasting. Same with beer, lager, cider, you know, spirits. It's nice to know what, what you're supposed to be tasting. Or at least a hint of what you're supposed to be tasting. Oh. Good long um, apple flavour flowing through there. Down, really warms it warms you up, you know. Um, yeah, even now, still taste that apple. So, hence the you know the length uh, that there was on about. So, see if I can bring something up. I'm sure I can. Oh, quite tarty, you know, from the apple. So. It is baking in here. Okay. So, that's the Chardonnay, Shiraz. And would you believe it? It doesn't say anything about. Um, I don't know if this is the second one of these, you know, I've done. Pina uh, Grecia. So 
So yeah, they're in, on their range. They've got Founder Stone Pinot Grigio and Founder Stone the Homestead Pinot Grigio. And personally, I just think it's a name. I don't think there's any, any actual difference because even the website's not coming up with a difference. That's Lanchester wines. Maybe one's slightly more refined, you know, maybe. Mm. So yeah, really nice taste to it. Um, again, good, equally as good on its own, on its own as it would be with food. Um, I'm hoping to have a bit of red wine tonight because I'm cooking the Chateaubriand later, which if you didn't know, if you, you've probably seen it in the likes of Audi in Iceland now, uh, about ten quid for a small piece. It's basically like a posh bit of beef. Um, and uh, we had it last year, it was amazing, but my daughter and boyfriend come at the wrong time and uh, they cop for half of it and uh, so our portion, and it's only little as it is, our portion was rather small so this year we're not telling them, we're doing it now, today with nobody about one has to be sly sometimes so yeah that crisp green apple taste really nice, really comes through lovely um, I can't fault it really, another excellent Pinot Grigio from these people and these mould over and Pinot Grigios, very very good good taste yeah the aroma's there now, I can smell it above the uh, potatoes that are cooking at the side of me and that's probably why I'm a bit warm it is warm in here, it's a good temperature tonight. Um, when you swish it around in your mouth, and I, I've tried to do the sucky teeth thing, but where you suck air for your teeth to really bring out the flavour, but this is quite strong as it is, so you don't really need to do that. And if you did, it'd blow your head off. But even just moving it around in your mouth, you, the, the, the flavours really do come through. And as they say, uh, wine um, on wine courses will say it's got legs. You can see the film on the inside of the glass. That says it's got legs. I can't remember what the definition was for that. But uh, at the end of the day, if you're a wine drinker and you want to know if Moldova and Pinot Grigio is any good, yes. Equally as good as Italians. Uh, n no difference for me. Equally as good. Uh, obviously, uh, with plants and grapevines and all these other things, they're grown on certain ground. And depending on that ground, uh, the ground you grow on can add flavours into the grape, which comes through at this end of the thing. But uh, if in Moldova their grounds equal, you know, similar to the, what the Italians is, and then that's why it's, you know, they've probably sourced them from there because of the fact that um, it's equally as good, you know. I mean, Italy, France, you know, if their weather's uh, good for growing grapes, and if our weather keeps on changing like it is, Britain will be a very big wine player in the future. So that was nice. Um, still getting them flavours coming through. Really, really good flavours. Um, better than just a wine that you drink and you can't taste anything. This you can really taste. Really good. Uh, so out of five, I'm going to give it a 4.4 4 out of five. I thought that was again another exceptional wine. And uh, one left. Nice Merlot for tomorrow on Christmas Eve. Thanks for watching. See you soon.